Now that we know a little bit about while loops, we can just do some tests to see how they work and, you know, just to give us some practice in writing the code. So I've got a, a spreadsheet already up. I've got a while loop uh, test, just script editor project already up here. Uh, let's go ahead and think about how we can actually write some while loops. So I'm going to create a function. We'll call this test while loops and we'll use this function to just test some code here. So the first thing we'll do is just show how a while loop works. We'll create a var uh, variable, we'll call it var. Uh, we'll just call it counter for now. And we'll say while counter is less than 20, uh, logger.log counter is counter. And we'll set counter uh, plus equals, say, 3. So we'll see all the multiples of 3 up until 20. And if we run this, it should run, and we look and we see 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, which pretty much tells me that this code is working. So what we're doing is we're creating a variable, we're running it while counter is less than 20, and we're just adding 3 to it. So remember, this is just the same as saying counter plus 3. You know, counter plus equals 3 is just the same. So we can just say counter plus equals three, same as, there we go. So that allows us to, uh, to just add three over and over again. Now, we could actually see what happens if we don't, if counter is not less than 20. Let's say we start with counter equal 1000 and we run this code and we bring up our script editor, or our, our logs, uh, we can see, well, nothing is there. It didn't actually run anything. Uh, if we want to make sure that something's not broken and we just didn't run the law, run this and something didn't work right, uh, we can just put a, a log statement at the end here. We'll run this again, and you can see we just get to finish. We didn't actually do any work because uh, counter is is it's too big. It's too big. Now, if we run into a situation where let's say we start with counter equals zero and uh, we say counter plus equals zero here. Um, and we run this, this is actually gonna give us our infinite loop. So we run, and it's gonna say running function test while loops, and well, it's just gonna keep running it and 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 running it. So this is actually, oh, this is tedious. So we can dismiss that, and we actually probably wanna fix that, because we don't want the computer to just run forever. So now it's actually gonna be even worse, because, well, we can see here, oh, now it's, well, it's still waiting on the last one to run, so uh, this is not good. This is not good. So let's go ahead and refresh our page here. Uh, see if we can reset everything and have this start over again. So if we run, now we get our, our result, and we can see exactly counter is iterating through all of those values. Not 20, because we are saying we're going to do this while it's less than 20, so it's not going to actually run for 20. Uh, but this way we can kind of see and detect what happens when we get into an infinite loop and prevent ourselves, you know, so we can identify it, we will try to avoid it in the future. Um, just note that if you do run into a, an infinite loop, you may have to refresh your page because it might just get stuck and you don't, you don't want to deal with that, you know, you don't want to have to uh, wait forever for that to respond because that's exactly how long it will run. You know, and the thing about coding is that it's pretty fast. You know, when we have a while loop, let's say while counter is less than one million, uh, counter plus equals one, this is actually going to run super fast. We run this and it's already done, you know, and it's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, let's go ahead and try that again. We'll run. It's going to be pretty quick. It's not going to be immediate, but, you know, this is actually going to run pretty quick. And uh, eventually this would run and return, you know, all the way up to a million. So computers are pretty fast when it comes to actually running these things. In fact, if we didn't log this, it would be even faster. Uh, the logging is actually what takes up a lot of time here, not necessarily the adding. So computers will work pretty quickly, but, you know, when we are iterating forever, well, they just can't keep up with that kind of computation. Um, now we can also use the increment and decrement operators and those are kind of interesting because they do some interesting things. If we have a var i and we could set it equal to zero, we could say while i is less than uh, 100, um, we'll just, let's count the sum of all the numbers from one up to 100. Var sum is equal to zero, sum plus equals i, logger dot log, the sum of the first 100 numbers is 
no, if we, let's go ahead and we'll take this back down to say 10 because we don't want that to run forever. We don't want it to take a very long time, but once this runs, which might take a second, we might have uh, gotten out of sync with our infinite loops and our long running loops here. So let's go ahead, now that we've done this, let's refresh because I'm a little worried we got something stuck on the back end there, something stuck while the script is running because it doesn't actually run in our browser, it runs on some remote machine somewhere. So let's run that and we'll run function. Ah, uh, we ran into a while loop, see, we did, or an infinite while loop. We just ran into the same problem because here we're not actually incrementing i at all. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll save our code. We'll refresh again just to make sure that we're not running into any infinite loop problems. And we'll run this, and that should come back pretty quick. And here we go. The sum of the first 100 numbers is 4,950. So we're getting that back. Now, the interesting thing is we don't actually even have to put this on a different line. Uh, what it actually will do is uh, we can add 1 to i in the same statement. Now, what happens here, and we can break this down to see exactly how this works, but if we run this, we actually see the exact same result, 4950. And if we look at how this actually works, var, we'll create a new variable here. We'll say var a is equal to 10, var b is equal to a++. Uh, and now if we log these two, logger.log a is a and b is b. We can see what happens here. What you'll actually see when we run this is a is 11 and b is 10. And that's because this plus plus happens after everything else. So we're actually setting b equal to 10 and then adding one to a. So there is a little bit of a sequence there, but you know you can kind of think of this as saying uh, some plus equals i, i is equal to i plus one. So we're kind of doing all of those things right in one statement. So just make it pretty quick. Now we typically don't do this. We typically won't add uh, this incrementer right in the middle of a statement like this because it is a bit confusing. Uh, but you know, just in case you encounter that in your code, that can happen. Now we can also have the opposite. So we can also have uh, plus plus. So var uh, c is equal to 20, var d is equal to plus plus c. And this is a little bit different. Basically what happens here is uh, we are going to perform our increment before anything else. Now if we run this, we won't see the same. We'll, we'll see that A is 11 and B is 10, C is 21 and D is 21. And that's because this statement here is like saying uh, C is equal to C plus one, then D is equal to C. Whereas up here, this is like saying a is equal or b is equal to a then a is equal to a plus 1 so just this a++ plus plus versus plus plus c or a++ plus plus versus plus plus a that really just has an effect on when things happen so that increment uh, and the decrement works the exact same way if we change this to minus minus and we change this to minus minus it all works exactly the same way except it's going to take one away from a and take one away from c and you can see we're going to go 9 and 10 and 19 and 19. Um, it works the exact same way it's just that uh, one is for addition and one is for subtraction uh, but it just matters the ordering now typically like i said we want to avoid that because it, it is confusing but in case you encounter it while you're looking at somebody else's code it will give you an understanding of exactly what's happening so now let's take one last look at while loops. We're gonna we're going to introduce or we're going to look at the do while loop. So uh, just so we can see how this works, if I say var, um, we'll create a, a variable called num here, and we're gonna set that equal to 100, and we use a while loop here. While num is less than actually, let's go the other way this time. Let's say num is equal to zero. While num is greater than 20 num minus equals 2 and we can log what num is and we can also log each statement in here logger dot log inside the loop num is now when we run this we're only gonna see the last value here we're not gonna see anything inside and that's because 
well, number is zero, so it's not gonna run this loop at all. Now, if we were to actually use a do while loop that does the exact same thing, but using do while, do logger.log inside the loop, num is num, uh, num minus equals two, while num is greater than 20. and we run this code, what we'll actually see is inside the loop, num is zero. So we've actually run the loop one time and we can see that uh, we can see that we are actually getting inside the loop. And if we log num at the end and we run this and we look at our log, We'll see, well, we've actually taken two away from num. We've started with num equal to zero. And we have run the loop one time, even though we aren't, as soon as we get to this while, it's gonna say, well, that, that actually shouldn't happen, but this do while will always run once. Now, if it's supposed to run, it's gonna work exactly the same way regardless. So if we say, uh, if we set num equal to 50 here, and then we set num equal to 50 here, 50 might be a large number because we're going down to 20, but if we run this, and then we look at our code, we get 50, 48, all the way down to 22, and then at the end it's 20, and then we get 50, 48, all the way down to 22, and at the end it's 20 again. So you can see when in normal circumstances, these are going to do about the same thing, but uh, when we are running these when they shouldn't run or they shouldn't repeat at all, we're going to see that the do while does run at least the one time. So hopefully this gives you a bit of understanding of how the while loops work, how the do while works, and how we can deal with incrementing and decrementing, uh, and some of the kind of little nuances there. Um, in the next video, we're gonna get into for loops and how we can use for loops. Then we'll get into how we can actually use for loops and ranges together to do some interesting things and create more complicated functions. But for now, thanks for watching.